Hello and welcome to this Thought for the Day, Tuesday the 27th of October, coming to you from the Chapels Royal and Majesty of Tower of London. We hope that this finds you well and safe and that you will remain so. The reading set for today's principal service in the Revised Common Lectionary is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. It brings us to one of a number of ways in which Jesus tried to explain to his disciples the nature of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. We'll come back to that. But for now, let's read the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 18 to 21. Jesus said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like, and to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again, he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, until all of it was leavened. So as we heard, there are two mentions here of the kingdom of God. Now, I am about to mount one of my hobby horses, but please bear with me. The translation that I read from is the new Revised Standard Version, or NRSV, to its friends. It is widely regarded as being the best compromise between readability and, most importantly, accuracy of translation. Accuracy of translation. Because every time you read the New Testament in English, or even in Latin for that matter, we are reading a translation. A translation from the Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. Now, anybody who's ever tried to translate from or into a foreign language, or even anyone who's just learnt enough to get by on a foreign holiday, will sooner or later have come up against the problem that there are some things that just cannot be accurately translated. This is especially the case when one word in one language has two different if related meanings in another. And this raises the problem of what to do in order to render accurately what the original text meant without clumsy paraphrases or worse footnotes. This is where you have to compromise between accuracy and readability. And this is often referred to as simply the translation problem. Well, the new Revised Standard Version, just like the King James Authorized Version before it, gives us the translation Kingdom of God. For most people, but especially perhaps for people who like us actually live in a country called a kingdom, the word kingdom implies an actual country. It implies, at the very least, a certain constitutional arrangement that, whether we like it or not, it's bound to have resonances for us of a geographical location, a place called the Kingdom of God, just as we have the Kingdom of Denmark or the Kingdom of Sweden. Now, you might say that obviously that's not what is being referred to in Luke's Gospel, but what is being referred to? The Greek word that's being translated kingdom can and often does mean that, but it also very importantly means simply rule, the rule of God. If we say the rule of God, it works well in some contexts, such as this, if not in others. So I shall annoy the translators of the NRSV by suggesting that every time you read the phrase kingdom of God, you try instead saying the rule of God, or just saying to yourself, ah, yes, the rule or kingdom of God. So what's all this about mustard seeds and yeast? What do they have in common? Mustard seeds and yeast are both edible, but that is hardly the point. It's now difficult for us to imagine that until the late 17th century, and thanks to the work of two fellows of the Royal Society in London, microbes and other microscopic organisms were unknown. They were unknown because they were an invisible to the naked eye. It was nearly 200 years before Louis Pasteur demonstrated that microorganisms cause putrefaction and fermentation. Joseph Lister, who read Pasteur's work in the late 19th century, pioneered
pioneered the use of antiseptics to reduce the incidence of gangrene and other infections in surgery. So let's wind back to early first century Palestine. Jesus wanted to use an example of something very small, but which could have a very big effect. So he selected two such tiny things, almost invisible to the naked eye. The mustard seed looks like a tiny black speck, while yeast can be equally minute. But both have an effect well beyond their size. The mustard seed can grow into a sturdy bush, and a small amount of yeast can indeed leaven a large amount of flour. So now let's put together the two strands of our thought, the rule of God and tiny things with big effects. Jesus was trying repeatedly to explain the rule of God by using easily accessible analogies. Remember that he was talking to people who had a vision of the coming of the kingdom or rule of God as something like a friendly invading army full of sound and fury vanquishing their enemies. Our Lord was patiently trying to explain to them this was not how it would be. There was no mighty army waiting in the wings. Instead, people we have to bring about the rule of God by countless tiny actions. Each action might seem insignificant in itself, but it could grow into something bigger, like the mustard seed, or it could induce changes in other things, like the yeast. It's not really that hard to grasp, but we are still struggling with it nearly 2,000 years later. Sadly, we have a potent negative example in our midst right now. The coronavirus is infinitesimally small. The biggest examples of the virus are 0 0.0000001 of a meter. That is six zeros before the one. But you do not need me to tell you what a potent effect such a tiny virus can have. Imagine if we could mimic the effects of the coronavirus, but for good, not ill. Imagine if we could harness innumerable billions of tiny acts of faith to bring about a permanent change for the better in our world. Imagine, that is, if by our faith we could bring about the rule of God. Idealistic? Well, that's what the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast is all about. Tiny things can have big effects. It's up to us to make sure that those effects are the right ones. Let's end with a short prayer. Lord, you are ever watchful and bless us with your gifts. As you provide for all our needs, so help us to build only what pleases you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.